academic induction is one of three key elements of the university's welcome experience. We run central welcome events, typically coordinated by the events team and student services, and also, of course, there's freshers run by the SU. Academic induction is the third element. Its function is to provide crucial information that students will need to begin learning with us. This might be anything from what books to buy, to what tutor group they're in, to specialist information about labs or practicals or field trips on their course. But also, it has an important social dimension. Its aim is to introduce students to the academic staff and to their course mates that they'll be working with over the next year or years. It's a time when people really begin to cement relationships, and so it's incredibly important for us and for our students. Unlike every other element of welcome delivery, academic induction relies directly on the participation of programme leads and other responsible academics all across the institution to plan and deliver. And for that reason, each programme this year, as in every previous year, needs a responsible academic induction lead, which will in some cases be the programme lead and in, and in other cases be another responsible member of staff related to the programme. This briefing is designed to let you know what you need to do in preparation for Welcome 2022, Academic Induction 2022 that is. So here's a quick look at the overall timeline. From January, academic induction leads for individual programmes or groups of programmes can start planning activities that they want to do with their students in September. You don't need to begin planning now if it's not convenient for you, but you can. And your Xerti schedules, which I'll explain in a moment, will be open to you to start editing. These are a place where you can record all of the information that your students will need to know before they arrive at university. By the end of February, faculty, to, faculty administration teams in your faculty will confirm any programmes that are being discontinued or suspended and therefore won't need an academic induction set up for them. By the end of April, if you're going to be using any on-campus rooms or any rooms related to the university that would normally be booked through room bookings, this should have been done through your faculty admin team. The deadline is during April so that it dovetails with the timetable build for the whole university. By the end of June, you'll need to have completed all of the information that you want to put on your Xerti schedule and also on programme DLE pages. Admin teams in your faculty will at that point be making final checks to make sure that all the information looks present and correct. Throughout the year, academics will have support to learn to use Xerti. We'll be offering four 30-minute drop-in sessions, details will be advertised later, through March, April, May and June. And you can always contact me as Chair of the Welcome and Onboarding Group if you need support and you're not sure where to turn. From mid-March, RAG ratings, that is to say colour-coded ratings, of which programme's information is still outstanding will be produced and circulated to your school leadership team. Of course we expect that in March many of the programmes will still be on red and that's fine, but this simply lets your school leadership team know which programmes still have information outstanding. What does it mean when we talk about a Xerti schedule and why are we using these? Prior to 2020, when welcome was significantly reshaped because of the pressures of the pandemic, academics used to have to determine the content of their programme's induction, often around this time of the year in January, and then send the information to their faculty administration team, who would upload it onto the web. Any time a programme lead or other responsible academic wanted to make a change, they needed to make that change via the faculty admin team which obviously involved mediating all of that information and sort of adding a middleman in. Using Xerti, the system that we've been using since 2020, academic induction leads can input this information directly themselves. So as opposed to writing the information in email and sending it to someone, you can simply type it directly onto a web template. This means that you have full editorial control over it and you can update it whenever you like if something changes like the time of a session, a staff member, or if you want to put new requirements for tech or textbooks that your students need to buy in. Xerti pages are editable by academics, but they get published directly to the web so that incoming students can see any changes you make in real time. 
Because they're published on the web externally, this also means that they're accessible straight away to new students who might yet have yet not yet have had the chance to enrol. And that's really important for accessibility. If a student is having trouble enrolling or simply hasn't enrolled for another reason, they can still see how their course is going to begin and what they might need to purchase or organise before they come to us. Xerti pages have a link embedded at the bottom of each to the program's DLE page. This, this will already be accessible to returners, of course, who already ought to have Plymouth login details. But that means that although you can put top level information uh, direct on the web via Xerti, you can also link to your program's DLE page to give enrolled students uh, more information and more detailed information should you require them to have that. Overall, what we hope is that the system of using Xerti schedules provides greater flexibility and little, if, uh, and I would actually say perhaps no increase in workload compared to providing information directly to the faculty via email. So we hope it's an improvement in process resulting from the pandemic. What information should a Xerti schedule have? The purpose of a Xerti schedule is to let students know where they need to be and what they need to do prior to arriving to study with us. So minimal information requirements would include where students need to be during your program's induction period. This is, of course, particularly important for programs who start earlier in September as opposed to the standard induction week in late September. Also, you would need to provide lists of anything that they will need to purchase, mandatory purchases prior to being their program. So this might be textbooks, other forms of reading, kit or anything else that's, that your program requires. Also, if you need students to have tech that has a minimum specification, such as a MacBook, particular software, so on and so forth, you would also need to include that. The university could potentially be liable under CMA legislation if we fail to provide students with the information that they need to make a judgment about, enroll, about enrolling on the course before they do so. And academic induction Xerti schedules are a key way that we communicate the course's requirements to students before they formally make a decision to come and study with us. You can, of course, add more. Many people put additional reading lists, short videos or link students to resources that they might be interested in. A final question on this is, should your academic induction be digital or face to face? Of course, during 2020, we had to deliver lots of aspects digitally. And last year in 2021, that digital bias remained to a certain extent. As restrictions ease, we're encouraging people to build in as much face-to-face -face content as they can with social events, short trips, um, uh, um, and simply plenty of fun for students. But we will continue to place an emphasis on storing all necessary information that students need to refer back to in a convenient digital location, whether that be on the Xerti schedule or on your program's DLE page, so that students can access it and return to it as they need to. So this is a quick video run through to show you how to access and edit the academic induction schedule pages in Xerti. So to access Xerti, if you go to the URL xerti.plymouth.ac.uk and then when you hit login on the screen that opens, it will just be your regular login details. And once you're logged in, you'll be landing on the Xerti dashboard. Now, when you get to the Xerti dashboard, in the workspace, there should already be your program Xerti induction schedule page, as it should have been shared with you from someone in the admin team. So as an example, you can see my BSc digital education page. If you select the page you want to edit, you click onto it, and then you'll get some project details here. But just before we carry on, if you don't find your page that you're expecting here, then you'll need to go back to the um, assistant faculty registrar in your faculty and they'll be able to give you access to the page or contact the admin team and they'll be able to give you the page you need. But once you have got the page, if you click onto it before you do any editing, you can see that you get some basic project details. This is the URL, so this is the web link that will be linked to your induction outward facing web page by the web team 
and then you get a little bit more information down here around the number of times it's been viewed but be mindful that the number of views on here is a rolling total so these pages have been in use for a couple of years so it's not a sort of definitive for each academic year but it's just so that you can see um, the information here and also you'll see who it's shared with who created the page and who else has editing or co-author ownership so what you can do before you go into edit as well is you can use either this preview button here or the URL link here and see what it'll look like as a web page view. So when it is linked from the university web page, you'll see that this is what it will look like. And so depending on what kind of device you're on, you'll have the timetable, scheduled days, additional resources, any links and your links to Moodle. So it's advisable to look at it in that view so that, because it's very different from how it's going to look in the editing view. Um, so you should do this regularly. If we go back into the Xerti page and what you'll see now is we're back onto the, the dashboard but this time we're going to edit. So to edit the pages if you click on the edit icon here and then you get your editing window. I'm just going to minimise the back one just so that you can see a bit better. So as I say it looks very different from the preview version so what you need to do when you're coming in to edit it is the very first thing you need to do is these little plus icons in the left hand menu click onto the two that you'll see until you've fully expanded the navigation the only page you need to worry about is this one that says page content. These other two pages are simply the title. So this is where the title of the program would be changed um, if needs be. But you don't have to do anything with those two. You just go straight to page content. And what you'll see on page content is the ability to change the actual text that's on your screens. So if we maximize that now you'll be able to sit. So here you'll be able to edit the actual text within the um, Xerti pages. Just so that you've got so, uh, some of the navigation here, you have the word publish and play. Publish is just Xerti's word for save, so save regularly. And play, you'll see, is just its word for preview. So if you, whenever you hit play, you'll get that web version that we saw a few minutes ago. So to edit the page, the most important thing to know is that in this little drop down is your expanding toolbar. So if you want to do any kind of formatting, links, bold, anything like that, you need to just click on this little expanding toolbar. So, so far the two main things when you're editing the Xerti page is making sure this menu on the left is maximised so that you can get to page content and then when you're on page content this little drop down. So I'll leave that open for now. So what you can do at this point is you've got the option for just editing the text so I might want to add just an additional sentence to this part here and so I'm just going to copy it in from a Word document. So if I was just to type you would get the same basic formatting as you can see there. Something to note that if you do edit and copy it from a document and it comes in looking different, which it will because of word formatting, if you highlight it and then there is an, a text rem um, like a button up here that will remove the format. So if you hit that, it will just take it so that everything's in the same font. You have got the ability if you want to to change the font to a different one should you need, but I'm just going to keep it on that for now. So you can see you can copy and paste additional text in and you can also just type directly onto the page. Um, if I scroll down a little bit for the timetable, this is where I'll be making some changes. So it's now going to be Monday the 21st of September as an example. And the room this year has changed and the timings may have changed. So the idea is is that you then edit your timetable and let's just edit that as well and we'll 
make it from two till four instead. And so as you can see, I'm just doing direct um, uh, editing onto the page there. We identify if it is on Zoom, but we don't put the Zoom links in here because these are an outwardly facing page. We put the Zoom links in once it gets into Moodle. And so as you can see here, you can just simply go down and change any of the details, um, delete things out if you don't need it at all. So if an event isn't happening, take it out. Now it might be that you don't have an entire day happening anymore. So it may be three days instead of four. And basically just like you would in Word, if you need to delete a whole section, just delete it. And if you delete something by accident, if you do Control and Z, and it will come back. So the other parts of the editing that you may want to do is that, as you can see in my additional resources section here, we've got a link to um, a website that we want students to look at. So in addition to the web link that is already there, you may want to add in a video. Um, so you can add videos in as a link and you can embed them. There's a separate video to show you how to embed them because it's slightly more complicated. So this one will just cover how to add them as a link. And the way we link the YouTube video is the same way as you would link to any website that you wanted to um, give students access to. So in this case, I'm going to say, please watch this TED talk. All I'll need then is the URL from YouTube to embed. And so I will just copy the YouTube link and then in your tool, um, in your formatting toolbar, you've got your link option. As I said, same for any kind of um, hyperlink you want to do. And then you'll get an option to please watch this TED talk. So. Again, you can just put content in here if you wanted to link to some reading or to, to other websites you can. So in addition to the web link that is already there, you may want to add in a video. Um, so you can add videos in as a link and you can embed them. There's a separate video to show you how to embed them because it's slightly more complicated. So this one will just cover how to add them as a link. And the way we link the YouTube video is the same way as you would link to any website that you wanted to um, give students access to. So in this case, I'm going to say, please watch this TED talk. So, and all I'll need then is the URL from YouTube to embed. And so I will just copy the YouTube link and then in your tool, um, in your formatting toolbar, you've got your link option. As I said, same for any kind of um, hyperlink you want to do. And then you'll get an option to please watch this TED talk. You may also want to link to an image or embed an image. It can be at any part of the page. For the example, I'm just going to put it into this additional resources part. Remember, you need your formatting toolbar open if it's closed. And this time I'm going to add an image using this icon here. Basically you click on browse server to open up your sort of media store within Xerti. Any images you've uploaded previously will appear there. If it's an image on your desktop that you need to upload, just use this upload files option and choose it as you would with a sort of email attachment or any attached file process and it will drop it into here. And once it's in here, you choose it by double clicking and provide some alternative text. So this is sample exhibition space. space. So this is the alternative text. It's an example exhibition space image. And then I'm going to adjust it slightly because it's a bit big, but we do this by trial and error. So let's and make it half its size and see what happens and click OK. And then you can sort of get a feel for how big it is within the space. And I want to give it a title. So this is an example of an space. So, so 
So this is giving you the title of an example of an exhibition space. You can see it here, but the best way to look at it is in that preview mode. So if you just maximize it and scroll down, you can now see you've got your original link, you've got your TED Talk video, and you've got an image of your example exhibition space. So if we close, and once if you decide you need the image bigger or smaller, you can double click on it and just adjust, adjust the image here as needed or the alternative text. So we will click OK and publish. And then when you close it, it will return you back to your Xerti workspace.